if a grain ship came out, if we managed to clear the mines somehow, uh, which is difficult, if we escorted the ship out and the Russians then intercepted, we would have to stop it by probably sinking them. And then we'd be into World War Three, wouldn't right. we? Right. So, that, and that's so the, it's really dangerous. There's been a, a, an interesting debate going on this week, which you'll have followed, about the, the blockade, the Russian blockade off the, Black, off the Black Sea, and some discussion of who should do anything about that and what, if anyone is to do anything about that. I think the latest turn in that debate is that NATO will not be um, a force deploying ships to try and break the Russian blockade. Now, you're nodding. Does that make perfect sense to you? It, it does make perfect sense to me. And uh, I mean, there's no doubt that the Russians initially were hoping that they were going to just go along the coast and take Odessa and uh, probably move through and link up with Trans, uh, Transnistria. Uh, which is part of Moldova, and they were looking at that as a, a way to go. Um, they've they've failed on all of that, um, and so they blockaded it, and they've stopped this huge outflow of of, uh, of wheat, barley, um, cooking oil. I hadn't I hadn't really realised. I have to say how what an, an immense amount Ukraine produces, mm. which is having an impact on the third world. It's actually having an yes. impact on China, for yeah. example. So. You know, there is a huge imperative to stop that. But if you look at the sea area around there, it's been mined quite comprehensively by the Ukrainians and also by the Russians. Yes. Um, and to deploy British warships, and maybe put, in concert with other NATO... NATO, NATO first of all, the would Turks... Still threaten the, a Turks massive, uh, escalation. the Turks would have to let them through the Bosphorus. Um, and they haven't agreed to let any warships through uh, recently. Um, and when we got up there, they'd be operating in what's brown water. We're a blue water navy, really. Um... If a grain ship came out, if we managed to clear the mines somehow, uh, which is difficult, if we escorted the ship out and the Russians then intercepted, we would have to stop it by probably sinking them. And then we'd be into World War Three, wouldn't right. we? So that's, and that's so the, it's really dangerous. That seems to be a clear danger. And yet as things stand, this blockade, is, as, you, as you say, it's blocking a, a, an enormous part of the world's supply of of grain, of, of grain, of, of corn oil, other, yeah. other vital commodities, which is forcing up prices around the world, but also threatening serious malnutrition uh, in, in so many countries. That cannot surely be allowed to go on. So if not NATO escorting uh, those, those freighters through the, the Russian blockade, what can be done? Well, I think the only, I mean, the only realistic thing, I think, is you've got to put them on trains and get them out by train. But you can't do it in the sufficient volume with trains over there, can but you? But I can't see any other way of achieving it. I mean, to, to open up the port is going to be really, really, really difficult. Right. Um, and uh, as, as I said, if, if, if UK tried to, if we tried to do it, if NATO tried to do it, you're moving rapidly towards you know, World War Three. And right. the, the blockades are always very difficult. In the Second World War, the Americans, before they came into the war, made it very difficult for us, blockading, this is I'm talking about the First World War, blockading the uh, Germans. And then, of course, when the Americans came in, we were able to blockade. The blockade completely stumped them, really. Right. But... You know, it's always extremely sensitive and moves you towards the next step of war, actually. Right, okay. That's the constant, constant yes. worry. But on a related matter then, Lord, Lord West, the supply of, of missiles capable of taking out a warship. Now, some of that is, is going on. Uh, as far as I vaguely understand it, it is possible to supply the Ukrainian military with more powerful weapons from land to sea, which could blow up a, a ship They're over 200 miles away. And there's hesitance about that. Just explain that to me. Um, well, I, I think the uh, the worry is providing Ukraine with what one might call l long range offensive weapons. I mean, not just to attack ships in the because we've seen them sink the Moskva. That was done by, you know, that was done by missiles. Although I think it was targeted by the Americans, but uh, they they fired the missiles, the Ukrainians. Um, but but actually, if it comes to going into Russian territory, firing onto Russian territory, well, you give people the weapons, and when you're an extremist, you'll use them. Um, the weapons mainly we've been providing are ones that have helped them defensively, you know, shooting down aircraft, killing armor and other vehicles coming in. Mm. And I think it's absolutely right we've done that, and we've done it on scale. I think to talk about going to uh, longer range fires, more effect, you know, missiles and the like, and to speak in a rather bombastic way, which I'm afraid I think Liz Truss did, I don't think that really helps, to be quite honest. Um, you know, things are, are, are bad enough as they are. There's no doubt Putin made the most horrendous mistake ever doing this. It is a, it is a crime anyway, but it's a mistake, which is the worst thing as a leader to do. Um, and I think he must be feeling, you know, how am I going to get out of this? I think a lot of people talk too early about Ukraine doing so well and everything. In the, in the end of the run, they they won't be able to win right. so the more, way we more think. Words, of course. If I can invite you to answer this question in about 15 seconds. seconds. Uh, George Soros 
at Davos, yeah. telling us we may be in the early stages already of World War Three, which could lead to the end of civilization. Do you agree with that? I mean, I well, clearly you could argue that. I don't actually think that will happen. I don't believe that there will be uh, uh, a nuclear exchange. But the wor my worry goes back to that thing about giving you a ramp to escape on. If you don't, uh, this is Putin, then you never know what might happen. And uh, we are in very dangerous very dangerous waters, and the government are spending nothing on defence. Yeah. They need to buck up. Dangerous waters, literally and figuratively.